let's take a moment and reflect upon a time not that long ago, maybe 10, 12, 15 years ago, where your favorite retro titles, accessories, consoles, and peripherals were sold for pennies on the dollar. Now contrast that with today, here in February 2023, go check for your run-of-the-mill classic title, any console you want, and I think you'll be struggling to find anything under you know, 20 to $50. So what did I want to cover here today? This is Retro Renovo. Like and subscribe um, if you want to. That's cool if you don't. Anyway, we're going to take a departure from what people normally talk about here in terms of retro collecting. So what I'm going to do real quick here, we're going to keep it short today. We're going to come up with two categories of individuals and how those two individual categories uh, basically culminate in our retro collecting scene and how the retro collecting future might look. So without further ado, there are two categories that I have come up with right now that kind of cover all of these bases here. Category one, you are someone who amassed their collection uh, 10 plus years ago, between 10 and 20 years ago. You bought these games at whatever venue you found them at. Doesn't matter. We, we'll cover that in a little bit. You bought them for, let's say, between one and eight to ten dollars per title. Classic title. Now we're talking AAA big titles, not your your you know shovelware type stuff. Your actual classics between one and ten dollars per copy. Most times, even had the box included. Okay. Category two. You are someone who may have a few things on the shelf, and you want to start collecting because you are now noticing that games are popular to collect and they're no longer perceived as a toy and it's kind of um, culturally more acceptable now to be involved with those sort of activities and you would like to maybe rekindle some of those older uh, nostalgic feelings and get some of the games that you remember playing but you no longer own well you're in for a bit of a shock go on ebay take your time right now if you want to pick a game that you remember let's say you don't own it and let's assume that it's been a while since you checked how much it's worth. Let's say maybe a couple of years ago you were interested in buying, you know, a copy of Banjo-Tooie, complete in box, right, for the Nintendo 64, a couple of years ago, let's say 2016, so I guess, you know, six, seven years ago, and yeah, you just, you said, well, it's over $100, I'm not paying that. Well, let's take a moment here. And let's look at that price today. I'm recording this audio before I actually know what the result is, but I'm going to say it's pushing 200, if not beyond 200, for a nice, good example, complete in box. Now, we all know that these are the facts, right? But let's talk about something here real quick that we just kind of gloss over this retro gaming community on YouTube here. Just We just kind of overlook this. Your Category 1 people. A lot of times they're sitting directly in front of them and they have their collection up on display in 4K videos for everyone to see, right? Look at me. I have this cool collection so I could, I could speak with authority on retro games, right? What if I told you that they purchased those titles for pennies on the dollar, fractions of what they're going for today? Is that really that shocking? Does anybody really think along these lines? Why is nobody talking about that? And a lot of these individuals are, you know, they're collectors and, and good for them. But unfortunately, a lot of them are resellers. And we're seeing evidence finally, and this is the next part of what I want to get into here. I think they're finally realizing how inflated these prices are. Now, in 2008, 2009, we had a huge economic constriction here, at least in the United States. But uh, there's also global impacts, and we're going back into a similar kind of situation here. You could argue we've been in it for a while. I'm not going to get into that. We're, let's not split hairs. Suffice it to say that I believe, and you could you know take this with a grain of salt, I believe that if you are a Category 2 person and you have kind of a passing interest and you would like to get into your retro collection, you kind of miss out on those those memories and you never really got into it back then because your priorities were different or you simply didn't have the ability to do it one way or the other and you'd like to get into that in 2023. Well, I would hold off on that and I would hold off on that for a little bit. I would say maybe eight months to maybe a year, year and a half before you actively start looking. And why do I say that? Now, let me be clear. 
first things first, we're never going to see 2005 flea markets ever again. It's not happening. It's not going to happen. That world is over for a variety of reasons. If you have been awake for the last decade, you'll know that everybody has a smartphone and they can easily look up prices and whether or not they're accurate, those are the prices. They see the high, the highest price on eBay becomes the default price and they will not accept anything less and they'll automatically reject any offers that come in lower than that. But I think the reckoning day is coming soon. Now, why do I say that? Well, I do have not so fond memories, right, of 2008, 2009. Things weren't that great back then. But I do recall a couple interesting things. Flea markets, um, your curbside Saturday morning, Sunday morning yard sales, your church bazaars, your church sales, and things of that nature took off in, in large order. And what also happened was your brick and mortar video game stores, even your large national chains like GameStop, they had their own, like GameStop had their own trade in section, right? Well, your brick and mortar retro game stores that weren't national chains had lines around the door. I remember seeing this with my own two eyes. They had lines out the door when the store opened to trade in their games for cash. They did not negotiate the price. They took the price, whatever was presented to them for their stack of games. Some of those games are now are, are quite valuable, and they just walked out with cash. Now, I think we're headed back to that kind of scenario. Um, it's painful to talk about. You know, nobody wins when that happens. But I guess the silver lining here is if you have been holding out for years to amass your collection or even start collecting just on a whim because you thought, it, you know, maybe it's something that's cool to have up on your shelf uh, just to look at because you remember something about it. Um, hold off for a little bit. Let these resellers feel the pain a little bit. Um, you know, don't accept these inflated prices. The prices are extraordinary. I asked you to find somebody, you know, an acquaintance, a friend, a parent, a relative, a sibling who was around and actionable in the 2003 to 2008 time frame. Ask, you know, somebody who you know goes to flea markets, yard sales, things like this. And ask them if they have any memories of video games being for sale. And I would be shocked if they did not have any stories about, yeah, I remember seeing Ocarina of Time. Uh, it, it, you know, it was next to like GoldenEye and, um, you know, a couple Mario Party games. I think they wanted maybe 10 bucks for the stack. That's something you're going to hear about. So we have two diametrically opposed paradigms here, right? Uh, in 2023, we have people who have stacks of this stuff and they're bordering on ripping off the rest of the people. So if you're in category two, hold out just a little bit, hold out just a little bit. We'll see what happens. I could be wrong. I could be off base, but I have a gut instinct here that we're going to see maybe, uh, you know, we're never going to see 2005 ish prices. It's not going to happen. It's not possible that that's all but set in stone at this point. But what we might see is somewhere along the line of like a 25 to 40 percent cut on some games some of these things are unobtainium unicorn items you know your, your panzer dragoon saga stuff like that it's you know that ship has sailed long ago right some of these more boutique things the ship has sailed but for a lot of your run-of-the-mill classics now that you're seeing pop up on let's say nintendo switch online I think they'll they'll be able to be had at a significant discount. Maybe not this year, but perhaps towards the end of this year into the beginning and the middle of next year. I think we will see that opportunity. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Um, like and subscribe if you want to. If not, that's cool too. And here at Retro Renovo, just a reminder, we cover some of the less common topics. And let me know. Give me some feedback if you want to dig into this a little bit deeper. Um, I have a lot of uh, anecdotal, you know, stories to kind of support this. And it, it's kind of fun to think about because it doesn't seem anybody's talking about this. And until next time, thanks for watching.